Hey friend, welcome to Grounded, the vestibular podcast. I'm Dr. Madison Oak, aka the Vertigo Doctor. I am the vestibular physical therapist who is here to help you with all things dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo. In this podcast, we explore the fascinating world of vestibular disorders. Come with me as we dive headfirst into a journey to discover the mysteries of the brain, the inner ear, and the balance mechanisms that keep us grounded. Whether you've been managing dizziness for one day or 25 years, we're going to get real about what it takes to manage dizziness, handle the anxiety cycle, and thrive, not just survive, with your vestibular disorder. First, I want to remind you that this is never medical advice. Remember, this podcast is for informational purposes only and may not be the best fit for you and your personal situation. It shall not be construed as medical advice. The information and education provided here is not intended or implied to supplement or replace professional medical treatment advice and or diagnosis. Always check with your own physician, medical professionals, and healthcare team before trying or implementing any information found here. Hello, my friends. I keep getting this question, so I just want to answer it here today on Grounded, which is, what is the difference between BPPV and vestibular migraine? I want to start off by saying that these are not even the same, even a little bit. And I know it can get kind of confusing, but let's start with the anatomy and physiology. If you do not know how the vestibular system works, please scroll. Yes, scroll all the way back to the very first episode of this podcast and listen to the episode titled how does the vestibular system work? It's from 2023, September something. I think it's been about a little over a year since I started recording this podcast, which is crazy. And haven't missed a week yet, which is also exciting. Anyway, what I want you to know is BPPV and vestibular migraine. So BPPV means benign paroxysmal positional vertigo and vestibular migraine are not the same on at pretty much any level. They both can cause nystagmus, which nystagmus is involuntary eye movement. So that is definitely a thing that they can both do, but it's not even for the same reason. So let's back it up. P BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, is a peripheral vestibular disorder. This means this, this is a disorder that's happening in your peripheral system, so in the inner ear itself. So you have a peripheral and you have a central. And the, again, the peripheral is that semicircular thing. If you Google like inner ear anatomy, that semicircular thing attached to the snail looking thing, AKA your cochlea is your vestibular system. Now, when you are a human being, with ears and an inner ear, you have two pieces of your vestibular system. The first piece is your utricle and saccule. Those are your otolith organs. They are linear motion detectors. This means they track up, down, side to side, diagonal, things like not eh, kind of diagonal, not really, things like that. And they are tiny little ear crystals that are supposed to live there, basically on top of this like jelly-like substance that pulls uh, one way or another way based on where your head is in space. And depending on where your head is in space, you will basically understand linearly because of the crystals pulling on the jelly because of gravity where your head is in space, which is kind of amazing. Now, if you want a more in-depth version of that, you can listen to the one on peripheral vestibular disorder or peripheral vestibular disorders and how the vestibular system works. Now, the next piece of this to understand is that there in BPPV, those crystals fall off into something called your semicircular canals. Now, your semicircular canals are three canals. You have your anterior, you have a horizontal or lateral, and a posterior canal. These canals are filled with fluid. That fluid moves back and forth. Like if you were a little kid and you spun around in a bunch of circles and then laid down on the grass and looked up and it looked like the clouds were moving really fast, that's you intentionally causing nystagmus, aka involuntary eye movement. And that is because when your ears detect motion, the fluid moves in there in order to detect the motion in the first place. And it hits this thing called the ampulla, which is kind of like a trampoline or like seaweed that's attached to the top and bottom. It flows back and forth depending on where you are in space. And depending on which 
direction you're moving. The fluid, right, it's going to move in the opposite direction of the way you're moving or continue to move. I'm going to back that up. The fluid moves based on the direction that you are moving, period. Now, because of inertia, when you stop moving, if that fluid keeps moving, it keeps hitting the ampulla, and that causes the like cloud effect that I was talking about earlier. Now, if you have BPPV, those crystals came out of your inner ear from your otolith organs into the semicircular canal. So it's still in your inner ear. I, I misspoke. Still in your inner ear, but just in a different place. Now, those crystals are floating around in the fluid. And because of, again, inertia, when you move your head into the, let's say, dependent position, aka the Dix Hall Pike test, when you move your head into that motion, you will move those crystals as well. Now, after you stop moving, the crystals continue to move, which is what causes the nystagmus based on the canal that is affected. The treatment is going to be a canalith repositioning maneuver. The treatment for posterior canal BPPV is the Epley maneuver. The treatment for horizontal canal BPPV is not the Epley maneuver because it's not going to move the crystals in the correct direction, basically. The treatment for horizontal is going to be the barbecue roll or a Samant maneuver. It just depends on it just depends on the person. So, and like what, what, uh, maneuver you want to do. So again, when you're thinking about treating these things, we want to consider what exactly it is we are dealing with. You want to make sure that you are treating the correct canal and you want to make sure that you are not just doing them all willy-nilly because if you are and it's not actually BPPV, you could be treating the wrong thing. And that's important to understand. Now, I'm just coming to me that I think I said the wrong maneuver for horizontal canal, so forgive me. Horizontal canal, BPPV, barbecue, roll. Posterior canal BPPV, Epley maneuver. Samant maneuver will also treat posterior semicircular canal BPPV. Now, the next thing that can also cause positional vertigo, which is what gets so many people so confused, providers and patients alike, is that vestibular migraine can cause nystagmus that can present identically to BPPV. And this is really confusing, right? Like, it looks like BPPV, it acts like BPPV, it must be BPPV, let's put them through an Epley maneuver or whatever maneuver. Wrong. Sometimes vestibular migraine looks just like BPPV and that can get really convoluted. So Epley maneuver treatment or BPPV treatment, canalith repositioning maneuver. Prevention, things like making sure your vitamin D, your calcium, your bone density, uh, cholesterol, diabetes, all these things are under control. Uh, blood pressure, did I ever say that? Under 120 over 80 or below. Now, these things are really important to understand because you want to prevent it. But once you get BPPV once, there's a 50% chance it'll come back again in the next couple of years. And that's okay because you can say, okay, I know what this is and I know how to treat it. Now, the next thing to understand is vestibular migraine. Now, vestibular migraine, I have a lot of podcasts on that you can go listen to. And so I'm not going to go in exactly like the diagnostic criteria, all the things, but I do want to talk about how it can cause positional vertigo. Positional vertigo means I went into a position and the room started spinning. Some people feel like positional vertigo means I laid down and I feel like I'm spinning. That's not BPPV. BPPV requires nystagmus, which therefore requires the room to look like it's spinning. That being said, we know from research only 50% of people will present with the subjective experience of the room spinning. 
So we don't actually, we know that not everyone says like, I feel like the room is spinning. They'll say, I feel imbalanced or have vertigo or whatever. Then you test them and they actually have BPPV, which I think is fascinating because I've had BPPV and the room definitely spun. Now, when it comes to vestibular migraine, this is a different, a different fish to fry, you could say, because vestibular migraine requires the not so sexy, not so exciting treatment of all of the things, not just a maneuver. Now people will try and do a maneuver and sometimes the placebo effect will magically say, oh, I feel so much better. And that is wonderful if that is you, but it does not treat vestibular migraine. It doesn't treat anything. It doesn't treat neuritis or SCDS or Meniere's disease or anything else. The Epley maneuver treats BPPV and that is all. In fact, it only treats posterior canal BPPV. It doesn't even treat all BPPV, which can be uh, difficult and frustrating in and of itself. So BPPV, I mean, vestibular migraine positional vertigo can present just like BPPV. So you might lie down and say, oh my gosh, the room is spinning. I definitely have nystagmus. You will notice that it is not, there's no latency and there's not a crescendo effect. So with BPPV, it'll take five to 10 seconds after you lay down for the room to start spinning. If you lay down and boom, the room spins. Or if you're already laying down and you're like, let's say you're trying to sleep on your side for, okay, for argument's sake. And you've been there for a couple of minutes and then the room starts spinning. Both of those situations are not BPPV because you need this delay. You need this five to 10 seconds of delay that says this is BPPV. Mm-hmm. Then it will slowly get faster. It will start out slow and get faster, 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 faster. It will reach its peak speed and then it will slow, 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 slow down. And usually you need someone to look at this for you. Usually this is not something people can tell by themselves. Again, so we have this crescendo, we have the latency period, and it is not the other things. If you have vestibular migraine, the way you treat it is never the Epley maneuver. I have lots of master classes for free, and this is what we do in vestibular group fit, and there's other podcasts on it, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. So again, I want to remind you how to tell. The, the, the best way to tell is to have a physical therapist, not your ENT, not your neurologist, not your chiropractor, a physical therapist. Look at your eyes when you are in the Dix Hall Pike maneuver. This is because... In science, we find that physical therapists are the best people to diagnose BPPV. And then also, if you're a person who has vestibular migraine, you are at a higher risk of getting BPPV or migraine in general than someone without migraine. And so so if that is you and you're like, hey, I think that I actually have BPPV and vestibular migraine because you absolutely can have both. You can actually probably have all the vestibular diagnoses, which I don't know anyone who does, that would be pretty horrible, but it is possible to have every single one. So do know that where you could have BPPV, VM, and triple PD or whatever. And it's also possible to have all those diagnoses and feel better and not be dizzy every day. That is also very, very, very possible. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you are have a better understanding of peripheral vestibular disorders and central BPPV versus vestibular migraine, which is also not the same thing as triple PD, which is persistent postural perceptual dizziness, which is a perceptual dizziness disorder. Not the same as VM, not the same as BPPV. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, you know where to find me at the Vertigo Doctor. I love you so much and I'll see you soon.